So you think you have a good product for Facebook ads? Well, today I have a quiz for you guys. I'm actually gonna go through with y'all uh, basically to determine if you have a good product or not. Product positioning is absolute key with Facebook ads. And if you don't have a superior product, you are gonna tremendously hurt your potential results. I see so many people, I, I get so many sales calls that come from this YouTube channel. And I decline so many people because they have a dog shit product at the end of the day. And if you want to succeed with Facebook ads, the criteria before you even start running your Facebook ads is to have a good product. So in today's video, I'm actually going to go through what that criteria looks like and kind of see, you know, what you can apply from this into your product just to see if, hey, like, is my product even more of it to keep pushing on Facebook? Or how can I improve my product? So I do showcase how you can improve your product in this particular video. So with that being said, uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nick Terrio. And if you're wondering why I'm even credible to be teaching this type of stuff, uh, I've done over $50 million in online revenue with Facebook ads for my clients. I run a digital agency. We spend about a million dollars a month on Facebook ads. And you can click link below to learn a bit more how we can run your Facebook ads. I also have another uh, kind of like coaching offer where, you know, if you want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one mentoring as well, I do have another um, aspect right there. Just click the link below that says, have Nick mentor you. So that being said, uh, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And let's dive into this video. So here is uh, kind of like what we're gonna start off with. Basically your criteria that you need to start pulling already is you need to go and find your competitor and their their specific product that you're you know competing against, okay? So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna do kind of my product, which is done for you Facebook ads. Um, and then my competitors offering the same thing. Okay. So, you know, if you offer Apple watch bands and your competitor offers Apple watch bands, like it's, it's, it's straightforward here. Okay. You know, basically whatever you're offering, you're looking at a competitor that offers the same thing. Okay. So do your research, figure out who your competitor is. And let's say for example, you're, you know, I have still have some people that think your competitor is the other business, the same size as you. If I get in the gym wear niche, my immediate competitor is Gymshark or Alphalete, the big dogs. So, you know, your competitor is the big dogs in your niche and you need to figure out how to um, beat them essentially, okay? Which I'm gonna show you in this video, okay? So the next thing you wanna do after you list your competitor and the product they're selling, which is the same thing you're selling, the next thing you wanna do is list your competitor's weaknesses, okay? Really important here, just list their weaknesses. What makes them weak and that essentially right there? Like what are some of the, the weak spots in their business, okay? Their product and their business. So I looked at a lot of other agencies in my space and I kind of identified a few of the main weaknesses across the industry, all right? Number one is that they have a large client load. They work with a lot of, lot of clients at once, okay? Two, they're constantly hiring green people to handle workloads. So because they're growing so big and have so many clients, they're consistently hiring people, which some of these hires aren't really the greatest fit for the company. They aren't really that, you know, great when it comes down to like a marketing side or stuff like that. So they're trying to train them up, okay? Three is lack of communication. When you have 100 people, 100 clients every day communicating with you, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to communicate with all of them, okay? Long times in between things being completed, again, due to such a long client load, you know, large client load, there's a lot more pressure on the team because now it's like, hey, we have to create ads for 10 different accounts this week. So it's a lot harder to basically go ahead and pump out things in an efficient manner when you have a larger client load. So. Next thing is, and the last one is a poor understanding of high level consumer psychology. I still talk to a lot of agencies now and they're so bent forward on like ad account structure and they don't really t look at like consumer psychology and stuff. It's just like really basic levels of consumer psychology understanding, which at the end of the day, consumer psychology and marketing psychology is what drives the needle forward into the business, okay? So basically just go ahead and list all of your competitors' weaknesses. Just do five, all right? If you can't think of five, and force yourself to find the five. If you have more than five, then cool, go ahead and add them, okay? Now, also to really wanna focus on the product, okay? That's the biggest thing there. Try to focus more on the product, but you can also look a little bit about that overall business as well. All right, next thing is, does your product have the same, okay? Now, if your product has the same weaknesses, then I want you basically just to skip forward, which I'll tell you when. Basically, it's, you know, it's gonna be, uh, you know, like slide number six right here in this little segment. And then if no, then I want you to complete the next section. So if you do not have the same weaknesses, 
then I want you to complete the next section, okay? So the next section right here is where we're gonna take all of our competitors' weaknesses right here, and we're gonna compare them to our product strengths, okay? So here is basically like my agency, like what makes my agency great, okay? So we only work with 10 clients max because we wanna be at like a 50% workload at all times. Whereas some agencies working with 35, 40, 50 plus clients, even 100 clients, to where they're always at a max workload. If you're always at a max workload, then when things get rough, you can't really push much more. Whereas if we're always at a 50% capacity, then what happens is when things get rough for those 10 clients, you know, maybe go through some rough waters with Facebook ads, we can spend a little bit more time of finding new winning ads and stuff like that and not have to overwork the team and degrade quality, okay? Second thing is that, you know, we've invested a lot of money into our team. We've had the same team for over two years and we've spent a lot of money investing and in making sure our team is very well trained and also too, we spend a lot of time and, um, you know, from, not just from very well trained, but also too from the, the highest level training they could possibly get to where they're very good at what they do. Okay. Next one is 24 seven tech support. We have all of our uh, clients in a Slack channel and, you know, we're me and three other people all have Slack on our phones where it essentially, if anyone acts, you know, out of the four of us, we can, and you know, basically three different time zones, we can almost get you an answer immediately. Okay. Fast turnaround times. So again, because we only work with 10 clients and at a 50% capacity, it doesn't take us months to get a few rounds of ads done. You know, we can get a few rounds of ads done for one client in a week and no problems at all. And then lastly is that we have high levels of understanding of consumer psychology to position our products with higher success rates. So not we're not just going into the ad account and throwing random creatives together every single creative has a very specific you know positioning and specific um, understanding of consumer psychology so that way we can really position our ads with a higher success rate and not just going in the ad account and throwing random shit up and hopefully something sticks in that case okay so we have some really strong product strengths of what makes our product better than the competitors okay but now let's say for example you don't have this you still have the same weaknesses as your competitor okay so we'll get to that in a second but next thing you want to look at is ad strategies to deploy so let's say for example you ha do have product strengths and your product is better in this particular case right here then here's a few ad strategies that i recommend you guys to test out a few different ad concepts to test out so first thing is us versus them style ad um, this is basically where you take like on the left side of the screen three main cons of your competitor and then on the right side of the screen three main ups for you it's basically three main pros for you okay um so for us in this particular case i could do like you know the leading competitor show some type of random image to represent a digital agency and i can showcase three cons large amount of clients lack of focus still looking at you know ad account structure okay and then for us well we maxed client roster of 10 clients at a 50% capacity, you know, high level consumer, uh, consumer psychology understanding and, um, you know, want to, you know, partner with you to grow for long-term success, something like that. Okay. So just a standard us versus them style ad. Okay. A next style of ad is called direct attack. And basically what you do is you take the direct attack on a specific weakness of a competitor. I see this all the time on Twitter. <laughs> And this is not necessarily specific to marketing agencies. Just I just see this all the time, just as like general statements where it's like, hey, if your marketing agency talks more about how to run the ad account than consumer psychology, run, okay? Basically just calling out a specific weakness and I'm um, directly attacking on it and saying how that's a bad thing, okay? That's all I'm doing right here, all right? So you can create some ads around this as well. Next one is what will happen when your consumer switches from your competitor to you? So like, let's say for example, here's what you're experiencing now. When you switch to us, this is gonna happen. It's almost like an us versus them style ad almost. So when you switch over to us, you'll see an increase in the number of winning ads found in your ad account, which allows us to spend significantly more and hit your profit and revenue goals faster within your business, okay? Also too, just a huge note, never call up the name of a competitor in an ad, okay? So if you're a competitor, like let's say for example, I'm in the digital agency space, my specific agency is called Terrio Solutions LLC, but I just kind of do my business as my name, Nick Terrio, but Terrio Solutions LLC. And let's say for example, our competitor is ABC123 Digital. I would never say ABC3123 Digital in the ad. I would just say the leading competitor, okay? That's honestly the easiest way just to get around with it. The leading competitor, call out a few things and then, you know, highlight yours, okay? Now, what happens when you have the same weaknesses, okay? Um, you know, we, we have one particular brand right now we're working with that, that basically has the same weaknesses because it's the same product as everyone else. So we're really focusing right now on how we can improve it, okay? So 
what you want to do here is that you want to list five strength claims. So just like what we did right here, except this is you already have a product that's better. You're listing your product strengths, boom, okay? But in this particular case, you have the same weaknesses. So what you wanna do is you wanna list the five strength claims that if made about your product would make it the obvious choice of your prospect. So now is where I want you to get creative. What could you improve about your product that would make it the obvious choice, okay? And I want you to list those five traits now, okay? And then after that, now you have homework. You need to go figure out how you can make that a reality for your product okay because at the end of the day if you don't have a superior product you are going to suffer with facebook ads uh, again that's why we turn down so many people who want to work with our agency because quite frankly they have a shit product at the end of the day and to be successful at facebook ads the first criteria is having a winning product okay and a product that's better than the competition okay so make sure you go through all of this figure out what that looks like for your particular product you may need to go out there and start to improve your product further or you may be in a good standing try to start leveraging some of these competitive you know your strengths over your competitors in your ads and also see how that can also improve your stuff also look at your landing page i see a lot of people um, you look like jackson uh, Jackson Chains, um, they have their landing page where they call out their competitor. They just say the leading competitor, how it's so much more expensive there and Jackson's so much more cheaper, but Jackson's so much cheaper because of X reasons. Really cool way to do that. Uh, put some of the stuff on your landing page as well, because when people who are product shopping and they already know what product they want, their product to wear, they're comparing the product pages together, not comparing ads together. So also have some of this on your, your landing page as well, or your product page as well. And that's also definitely going to improve your success rate with um, Facebook ads. So yeah, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, again, if you're interested in a, a working with us um, or just literally having a free strategy session, click the link below to uh, book call for me, my team, and you know, kind of go over your ads and all that good stuff right there. Um, if you're interested in more of the coaching one on one, then click the link below that says, Hey, one on one more mentoring with Nick Terrio, and that also help you out as well. So, uh, yeah, guys, make sure the like button, hit the subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. My name is Nick Terrio. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.